because of this Swarupa Brahma, illusion about your spiritual identity. If we actually understood our spiritual identity, we wouldn't want to do anything except enhance our consciousness. You see? And that's who a sadhu is. A sadhu is a person who has realized, oh, without consciousness, there is nothing else. So I better make it my business to enhance and develop and make strong my consciousness. That's the real purpose of life. That's the real business. That's why we're here. Huh? And more than that, Swarupa, my real identity is a conscious being in a world of pure consciousness in relationship with the source of consciousness. Uh, just like now it was just raining, well, where is that water coming from? Uh, it comes from the ocean. The sun shines, evaporates the water, it makes a cloud, the cloud comes over the land and then the rain falls. Without the ocean there, we wouldn't have any rain. See? So the, the ocean is the reservoir of the water. Uh, similarly, we see the light coming. Now, where is the light coming from? It's coming from the sun. Uh, so the sun is the reservoir or the source of this light energy. And now we just went through an elaborate discussion of how we are conscious and we are our very being is made of consciousness. So somewhere there has to be a source of that consciousness, that energy. We never find any, any material or any energy, especially without a source. Huh? The ocean is a source of water, the sun is a source of light. Well, what is the source of consciousness? It has to be God. Huh? Nityo nityanam, chaitanash chaitananam. Uh, there are many conscious living entities, many eternal conscious living entities, but there is one living entity who is the source of all the others. And who is he? Eko bahunam yo vidhati kaman. He is the one who maintains all the others. He creates this material world, he creates the spiritual world, he creates the living entities, the souls, and he maintains them, he gives them all their necessities. So that's God. There's no other definition of God that really works besides that one. That's the definition that's given in the Vedas. Om Purnam Purna. Uh, he's complete. Purnam Adaya. Purnam eva vashishyate, that everything is coming from him. And everything that he creates is complete, because he's complete. Therefore, all the living entities are also complete units, living entities, living beings, conscious. Huh? And we all have, in minute quantity, similar qualities as he does. Just like the water coming from the ocean is also wet. The light coming from the sun is also effulgent. Uh, so the soul coming from God is also conscious, also individual, also a, a person. Uh, God must be a person. Why? Because we are persons. We're individuals, we have identities, we have desires, we have thoughts, we have emotions, we have initiative, we have will, we have all kinds of psychological characteristics that derive from consciousness. So if those are present in us, they must also be present in God because he's the source. Huh? Just like the qualities of the rainwater are also in the ocean, which is its source. The qualities of the light are also in the sun, which is its source. It's very simple. Huh? Only a, someone with a devious mind would think that there's no God or, there's no, or that God isn't a person. <laughs> you know, you'd have to be very devious and use very tricky arguments to try to prove that. <laughs> because the obvious thing, you know, if you see there's a, there's a chicken, huh? where did that chicken come from? It came from another chicken. Huh? Where did the dog come from? came from another dog. So where did the soul come from? The super soul. Where? 
in Sanskrit, the word for soul is Atma. So the soul, the Atma, must come from the super soul, Param Atma, the supreme soul. It's very simple, very straightforward. But because people are in illusion about that, they suffer from this anartha, Swarupa Brahma, illusion about spiritual identity. And because of that, they can't engage in spiritual life. So the next anartha is Asat Trishna. Trishna means thirst or desire. And Asat means that which is temporary. Sat is eternal. Sat also means truth. So when we are thirsty or desiring things that are asat, that are temporary or material, then this is an anartha. Uh, I want this, I want that, I want more of this, I want three more of that. Uh, I got to have one of these or, you know, I'm not going to be happy. That's what we think. But that's illusion. Real happiness doesn't come from outside. Huh? Think of the last time you felt happy. Uh, where was that sensation of being happy coming from? Was it coming from outside through your senses? No. No. Happiness is an emotion. Happiness comes from inside. Happiness is spiritual. Happiness is a flavor of consciousness. You see? So real happiness means that our spirit is in a state of, of happy emotion. Uh, we're feeling a certain rasa that we like. We, we like the taste of particular rasa. So don't think that material things can make you happy. They can't. They can't. In fact, we were discussing the other night, with, I think that was last night, how uh, material desires and material activities always result in suffering. Uh, because if you become conditioned to getting happiness from material things, you're always going to lose your happiness because all material things are temporary. Everything in the material world is limited by time. So we may be happy for a little while, and then, you know, no more happiness. Time takes it away from us. You know, at the very least, we're going to die and have to leave this material world. And then everything we have materially, uh, we have to leave behind. And we have left only our consciousness. So we should make the cultivation of this consciousness the chief aim of life and not this acquisition of material things uh, or creation of material things. <coughs> that will only lead us into unhappiness. Okay? So this is another anartha, thirst for material things which are unreal. Then the third category of aparada, or sorry, anarthas, is aparadha. Radha means worship. Radha is uh, the principle of devotional service. And aparadha means that which is against that principle. <coughs> huh? See, radha means that we love God, that we love Krishna. And uh, in fact, Radha is the embodiment of that love. So if we do something <coughs> against the principles of worship that, that discourages those uh, principles, that's aparadha. And there are many, many aparadhas, which we're, we covered in detail in the Nectar of Devotion. I think there were like two or three chapters devoted to nothing but different <coughs> offenses or apparats. Yeah, here it is, uh, chapter 8. So if you go back and look at chapter 8 of Nectar and Devotion, it talks about all these different offenses. And we'll talk about the different categories of offenses a little bit later. And finally, we have Hridaya Daurbalya, weakness of heart. Weakness of heart means that we go whichever way the wind blows. Huh? If, the, if the conditions are favorable for devotional service, you know, uh, maybe a close friend of ours is a devotee and uh, we're associating with them and getting their influence, 
then okay, I'll do a little devotional service. But then if that friend goes away, or if there's some difficulty, uh, then, oh no, then I just go back to ordinary activities, and I don't think about this anymore. Uh, weakness. Weakness of heart. Weakness of heart means we have no steadiness, we have no determination. Uh, like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, uh, Vyavasayatmika buddhi, that one's intelligence is firmly determined to attain the spiritual platform. That leads to success. But he says that the, uh, the minds and desires of those who are irresolute are many branched. You see? Those who are on this path, they're committed, they're dedicated, and their aim is one. They don't want different things. They only want one thing. They want love 